Welcome to Data Science with Python and the Shiny Tools of Anaconda. My name is Brian Kapicki. And getting started, I want to kind of highlight something a little bit here. Uh, I should start really with, and now for something completely different, because Python is actually named after Monty Python's Flying Circus, the very successful comedy series by the BBC. It was during mostly the 70s. Great show. I love Monty Python. But I don't think it was as good for marketing. So marketing decided to, I think, fixate on sort of the snake theme. And that's why you get all these icons and everything around that. I do want to point out the link at the bottom of this slide, because that's where you can find this slide, the slides for this. And if you just go to github slash, so github.com slash bcafferkey, under the shared folder, you'll find all the different types of code slides I do. So you can find other things I've done on YouTube, etc. So have fun with that, but I'm giving the full link here in case you want to just go directly to that. So before I start in, a little background. If you're used to R programming, then you're kind of probably used to, you know that with R, it basically it's very simple. You go to CRAN, CRAN has the R distribution. That's about it. The only other distribution I've really seen is uh, Microsoft has one that used to be part of Revolution Analytics and it's meant for our server and it has commercial extensions to R. And so there is that distribution. But R is a pretty simple world where you install R, it's designed for data science and you're pretty well good to go. Python's a little different because Python is an all-purpose language, much like Java or C or C Sharp or C++. It does everything. And so because of that, it isn't inherently designed to do data science or data analysis or anything in that realm. So what you need to do is add libraries to it so that it can do that functionality. And once you add libraries, Python's extremely versatile, so extensible that it does an awesome job when you have the right libraries installed. So installing Anaconda, that distribution is specifically designed to support data analysis and data science, machine learning, all those good things. Now I want to highlight a few of the libraries that you get when you install Anaconda. And these start with visualization libraries like Matplotlib and kind of jumping down Seaborn. Very rich, do a ton of things, very competitive with our libraries like uh, ggplot2, so that, think it that way. Also, Python is very object oriented so it tends to work with methods, properties, and classes. When you get into arrays and number crunching, out of the box, Python doesn't really have anything to do that very well. But if you install, again, you get this with Anaconda, the NumPy library really emulates vectors in R. It's kind of good at number crunching. It can do a lot. And it may even extend beyond what R does typically with vectors and stuff. So really great. And it's written in C, so it tends to be pretty fast. It's, it's a great library. You want to do predictive modeling and those types of things, then you need to use the scikit-learn Li uh, library. And that's again, you get this with Anaconda, so that's kind of why I'm big on installing Anaconda. If you do data wrangling, querying, and manipulation of data, the standard in Python is called Pandas. And Pandas really emulates our data frames. So if you're familiar with doing data frames and analysis, which is really just in memory tables, Pandas works the same way. Conceptually, it's very similar, but there's a lot of nice um, methods and properties that hang off of the objects of Pandas. And so you can do a lot of things that like uh, searching and things that sort of built in there. So it's really nice that way. And finally, I want to mention something called SQL Alchemy. What's SQL Alchemy? And what SQL Alchemy does is it supports object relational mapping. So if you have, if you want to, if you're doing object oriented programming, very often you want an abstraction layer that works within your classes and methods. And that's really what SQL Alchemy is really good for. Additionally, you can do, um, direct SQL access and there's methods that will go directly to doing insert and SQL queries, etc. Or you can directly run SQL statements to the database. So that's what's really nice about SQL Alchemy. It kind of works at multiple tiers. Finally, um, we're going to get to the installation now. So let's follow the link and we're going to go and install Anaconda and we'll go from there. So if we click on the link here, then we're looking at the Anaconda distribution and we can install 3.8 X right now it's up to 3.6 or we can install 2.7 and that's basically the two flavors we have available now there are commercial extensions to Anaconda which you may use and products there so feel free to look around at that but we're just going to go with the open source version Python took a split a few years back in which 
there were enhancements that the creators of Python wanted to make that they felt were so important that they didn't want to just build it in and allow for compatibility backwards with the old ways of doing things. As a result, they created a split in the language which is not backward compatible. So anything 3.x and above is the new version and anything 2.x is the old. They froze the Python 2x versions at 2.7. So as of that, which is fairly recent, there'll be no more enhancements to that going forward. And the 3.x is where people need to be going to now. And there are some problems with that because there are libraries that have not been converted to the 3.x versions yet. And you notice we have a 64-bit and a 32-bit available here. So I'm going to install that. And right here, I'm going to, we can install this and put it where we need to. I'm not going to actually install it since I do have it on my machine, and it won't let me install over it. So I'm going to leave it, but we'll come back to actually using it now. But you just follow the prompts and go through it, and you'll have what you need. Go back to my slides. Okay. So... One of the things I want to highlight is a program that you get when you install Anaconda. Assuming you've installed it now, you just saved it, you know, you went through the screens, take the defaults, uh, but what you get is this thing called Anaconda Navigator. And what Anaconda Navigator shows you is some of the programs you get with it. And I talked about the shiny objects of Anaconda earlier. And two of the things you get from it is one is called Jupyter Notebook. Notice the Jupyter for Python and Spider. Again, Pi as Pyter. And so the idea here is there's two cool things you get. And there's some other things, Jupyter Lab. I encourage you to look at that. You can launch that as well. And Qt Console. And then there's a couple of things they're given, three other things you can install if you want. So in addition to all the data science libraries that we talked about, the two things I really want to highlight here that I've played with, I use a fair amount, is Jupyter Notebook and Spider. So let me back out a minute. And uh, let's just look at running. A Jupyter Notebook. Now you can go in and I can go in here and run Anaconda Navigator and I could then directly kick off a Jupyter Notebook. But Jupyter Notebooks are a little funny in the sense that if you're not in the folder where the notebooks are, it can be a bit of a pain to navigate to them. So what I like to do instead is start the Jupyter Notebook from a prompt and then navigate, to, navigate where I'm going first. So what I do here is I'm just going to look at what batch files I have and I'm going to start one up. I'm going to just say use the batch file. See, notice the go to underscore ji. So I'm going to say go to ji. And that's just a DOS batch file. It just runs the command for me because it gets me to the path. And from there I'm going to say jupyter notebook. And that will start it up. Now I have another video on Jupyter Notebook. So I invite you to go look at those and I get more into how they work and how cool they are. But what Jupyter Notebook is really great for is collaboration. It's great for uh, demonstrating code and, and teaching. And one of the nicest things about Jupyter Notebooks is it's a browser-based interface for pretty much it's over 75 languages. So it uses something called a kernel, and it can swap in and out different languages, including R, Julia, and everything, and of course, Python. So in this notebook, I'm going to pull up a, a Python notebook. And it's, it's basically what it has is this idea of cell by cell. You have an input cell. You can input code. It can be any number of lines, really. And then you can execute the code. And the rendering, if needed, is done in stream, like right within the notebook, right below what you created. So you can see here, uh, there's also something called documentation annotation type of cells. So this is called a markdown cell. And notice at the top here, you have different types of cells. And a Markdown cell, Markdown is, if you haven't used it, it's really great. It's supported by R and R Markdown and Python. But what it is, is it's really just a sort of simplification of HTML. So a single pound sign is an H1 tag, two pounds is an H2 tag. And I can put information, like annotations, explaining what I'm doing in my notebook is, is the ideal use of that. If I do Shift Enter, it executes that block. And here I'm doing some importing of the libraries I need to do some graphical renderings. And then I can, this is just a print statement, and I can cut that out. I don't need that line. So you can navigate your cells. You can move around. So each cell is just a block of code, but it's very much like a console as well. And Jupyter Notebooks did evolve out of the IPython console. 
the difference is it, it supports multiple languages, which IPython does not. But you can see how I can do all kinds of visualizations and all these things in stream just to give you an idea of how powerful it is. And over here you can see that it's a Python notebook. There's a lot of different features, so I invite you to go look at that. But that's one of the cool things you do get automatically with the Anaconda installation. And again, if, uh, if we take a look, let me close this notebook out for a minute. But if we take a look how I started, you can see it's actually running a web service in the background to support the notebook interface. Um, so I'll say leave this. And I wanted to show you too, it actually supports, in this case, R. So I have an R notebook. And you can see, again, Markdown supports even things like regular HTML if you want, or CSS and things, so that's great. Shift Enter will execute the cell. And you can see all these annotations. And this is actually, you know, this is R code, and it does all kinds of cool stuff. So let me see if I can get something a little more interesting. Well, you can see here, rendering of the graphics. So this is, again, the idea is to just show you some R code and that you can do those notebooks and you can do many different languages. So play with Jupyter Notebooks, it's very popular. It's, it seems to be gaining more and more popularity all the time. And it's nice because again, you can use it with any language. So if you use different languages and you don't wanna to have to keep changing the IDE you use, this is a great way to do it. It's also great for demonstrations and teaching. I'm gonna close that out, say leave, and I'm just close this out. And to end this, what I can do is just go back to the console or the, the prompt that I started it from. Control C a couple of times and break out of it, stop the notebook. Okay, the other thing I wanted to demonstrate was Spider. So I, you can see Spider on my taskbar. I use it a fair amount, but it's it shows up here. It's also under Windows programs. So I can go to my Anaconda that I just installed and you can see these things are available. And Spider, I'll go back here. Spider is a Python IDE. So it is specific to Python very rich IDE. It's kind of like the Visual Studio for Python. Uh, there are Python tools extensions for Visual Studio as well, but uh, Spider is pretty good considering it's given to you as open source, obviously free. It's very powerful and uh, and updated fairly frequently. You get lots of enhancements all the time. And it's just a really nice uh, you know, Python in development environment. So you can see here I'm getting notified there's new releases. And one of the things you get, I mentioned, we saw Jupyter Notebooks, and I mentioned that IPython is where Jupyter Notebooks came from. So you can see the console. This is where, when you run your code, it's going to come out to. One of the consoles supported is this uh, IPython console. And you might notice, you know, it's very similar to Jupyter Notebooks. It's got the input and output numbered areas. And I can do things like um, I'll run some of this code. Just to demonstrate, I'm going to run a big block that's assigning some values. I'll just put, paste it in here. And it renders it immediately. You can see, like, I did some printing of my, the values I created. And I'll just do something. I want to just kind of demonstrate that it'll actually do rich visualizations in stream. Let me try this again. I don't think it took my copy in. It's taking a minute. And you can see it It now renders things like a this line chart in stream. So you can do any kind of visualizations and it can render it just like the Jupyter Notebook as you go. But in this case, I've got a full-blown development environment. So with Spider, I can actually develop websites. I can develop uh, anything I want to develop with web mobile apps and whatever. And it's got a lot of nice features. So I invite you to play with it, take a look at it. But I, I kind of done a searching around. What IDE did I like to use with Python that I didn't have to pay for? And in the end, I came down to Spider is probably one of the best choices, at least for my needs. It's not, now a lot of people also just like to do a simple text editor and then integrate with the tools. So you can poke around, but Spider is a pretty good one. And it's handed to you free with the Anaconda distribution, as I mentioned. All right, so the other thing I want to talk about before we wrap up is the idea of module management. So one of the things you can see in, in the slide is 
And let me back up for a minute. So when I talk about module management, you don't typically get much into that with R. R, you just say install that package and puts the package in. Simpler environment. But again, when you're using Python, think more like Java uh, or something like that. We have jar files, you need to bring things in or C. And so the idea of this is uh, you can use two different programs because of the Anaconda distribution. The default for Python is pip, which I had to look up, but it stands for pip installs packages, which is a bit redundant. Uh, or pip installs Python, that's another version I saw. But the idea there is you want to install packages and things, and pip will do that for you. So just go to the prompt, say pip install, whatever, like in this case Plotly, which is a great visualization library, and it installs it for you and you're good to go. But with Anaconda, you can also use a utility called Conda. The biggest difference is, is that Conda is not specific to Python. It can be used in a sort of broader context and good for using tools that go beyond. If you're doing multi-language development stuff, it can go beyond just the Python language. And so I did a search and I found this blog online that basically answers the question of what the difference is between them. So feel free to take a look at that. But basically, this is on, I think, Stack Overflow. But the idea is that PIP is really meant to just kind of do, um, says it's not handling library dependencies, and it's not something that goes outside of Python, whereas Conda is a little bit broader in its application. So wrapping up, I hope you like this presentation. Please subscribe. Again, the fun thing about it is you get some cool stuff with this. When I first downloaded Anaconda, I was really excited to see, like, wow, it didn't just give me the libraries I needed and the Python language, but it gave me a great IDE like Spider, and it was the first time I'd ever seen Jupyter Notebooks. So I kind of started me on that journey of learning about those and just how powerful they are. So it's very cool. Have fun. Keep, uh, keep programming. And talk to you later. Thank you.